In the following tutorial, we are going to download Get Simple and we're going to install it into our XAMPP. So the first thing we need to do is go and download it. So I'm going to go over to Get Simple, um, get simpleinfo and go over to the right where it says download the latest version and I'm going to download the latest stable version for right now. Now it's being saved into a folder and it's being saved in my downloads so that's where you need to find it somewhere on your computer wherever you've saved it. You'll see that the size of this file is not too large which is really great. Now the first thing we need to do is extract the files. When we extract the files you'll see we're creating a bunch of files inside there but we're going to take that entire folder called get simple and copy and paste it or cut it and paste. You can do control X and then we're going to paste it into our XAMPP. So I'm going to go to my local C drive go to XAMPP, go to htdocs, and that's where I want to paste it. So I'm going to right click and choose paste. Now when I go back to my uh, local server, that's the local host, I can hit enter and see that that get simple folder has now appeared. Now I can click on it and go through the installation process. Now whether you're on a web server or a local server you should get basically the same thing. You may see a couple different things like maybe yours has um, curl on that server um, and maybe it might have a different version of PHP and that doesn't really matter as long as it's PHP 5.2 and above should work just fine. Now I'm going to continue with this setup and I'm going to give myself a name. This is going to be a testing website my name is going to be admin and if you put in an address I'm actually going to set mine to a spoof email address for right now. Now I don't suggest that if you were installing this on a real local uh, real hosting server and the reason why is because it will email you uh, the username and password um, that you can reset if you want and that's what we're going to do in the next step. So I'm going to choose install now and you'll see it says don't forget to change your password and we definitely want to do that because we did not receive the email because this is on a local server and it can't send that email so I'm going to change that right now and I'm going to put in a very simple password just for testing so I'm going to hit save that it says the settings have been updated and you'll even notice that it has undo so that's great you can undo just about any time you save a page or save settings you can undo that um, if you want to. Now as soon as you go and do other things just be aware that you might not be able to undo. You need to undo things immediately. Anyway let's go take a look at what we've done. If we look at um, our pages and files and themes these are where we're going to find everything. Our first thing is pages. We have one page right now called Welcome to Get Simple. I'm going to click on that so that I can see the text that's there. Now you'll see that um, it's got some text already here. I'm going to delete some of it just by selecting it and pressing delete, getting rid of that. It did remove that H2 there, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We'll fix that here in a minute. And then I'm also going to remove that H3 and get it all the way down to just that little bit right there. Now I can save the page and you'll see that I could of course undo that if I wanted to and it'll go right back to where it was which is great. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that a little bit better this time. There we go. Do the exact same thing. I'm gonna save the file and I'm also gonna change a couple other things. I'm gonna call this the home page and save it. Now if I go into my page options this has a lot of very important information you'll notice number one we've got the ability to add tags and keywords to our pages and right now I'm going to just remove that. It's great for search engine optimization. We also have the ability to edit the name of the page as well as the menu name of the page. Right now the prior priority is set to one so that's also very important is what priority it is right now and it has the check mark that says add to menu. Those are all important in order for us to show our pages correctly. I'm going to go ahead and save the updates and I'm going to right click on uh, this right up here, open 
link a new tab. That's the testing website. So that it opens up here. So we can see that we have our home page and we've got home over on the top right. Now I'm going to create a new page. I'm going to create a new page. I'm going to call this page two. Page two. This is going to be content for page two. So I can save that page. Now if I just save that page and go and refresh over here, you'll notice that that page did not show up. And the reason it didn't show up is because we need to go to page options and add it to the menu. And we can also change what menu text is there if we want. Um, but it's very important that we change the menu. Then, or add it to the menu. And then I'm going to save and go back and refresh again. Now another thing that's kind of weird you'll notice is that page two is to the left of page of the first page and I'd really like it to the right of home. So if I go back and look you'll notice that I did not set the priority of this page. Right now the home page is set to priority one. If I set this one to a later priority than page two then you'll see or sorry than page one you'll see that then it will appear to the right of page one. So that means that page one will be first. The priority goes with one, two, three, four, five, and all the way up the scale. Now within like priority one, two, or three, um, it actually goes alphabetically. And so that's why you would see um, when you would set them both to the same hierarchy, you might see one come in front of the other one. And it's based upon, um, once again, the alphabetical um, name. Now we'll also see our names alphabetically usually in our page management. If I create another page and I call this another page, this is content for another page. Let me go to page options. I'm going to Whoops, add that to the menu, priority two, save. Now if I go back, take a look at it, you'll see I've got page two and another page there. If I go and view my pages, you'll see another page appears at the top and that's because alphabetically it appears at the top. I'm gonna go over to this page though and just take a look. It says priority two, I might set it to priority one and see what happens when we go there. You'll see now another page is before the home page. Kind of weird playing around with these page priorities. So there we've got our home, page two, and another page. I typically go and change the priorities to the pages that I want. I want that one to be third, so I will change it to priority three, which is not going to change anything here, but um, that's how we might do that. And if I view the pages, once again, they're viewed in alphabetical um, uh, order. Now that might be changed in future versions of Get Simple, but that's the way it's set up right now. Now, the next thing that we might want to look at is just uploading files. If we were to upload a file, all we have to do is find um, an image Here's a lobster from a client website that I have. So there's the lobster that they've brought in. And you can see it shows me the text here for it. I can also get thumbnail HTML or thumbnail link or thumbnail to image HTML, the original image, and the current thumbnail. It's pretty cool. And one of the things I think is really cool about the thumbnail is you can create a thumbnail by cropping a region and then pressing OK. Let's see, I'll do the Command B. Uh, Control B for square. There it is, Control B. And then create a thumbnail. So there's the thumbnail that we've just created. It's really cool that you can do that. Now, if we want to go and do a little bit more editing on the pages, 
you'll notice that we've got a couple features here, um, but it'd be nice if we had a, a little bit more features. So that's one of the things I'm going to go to. I'm going to go and find out how to add a couple more features to this edit bar. If we go to the gsconfig.php file, which is in our get simple folder, that's the one we want to edit. And there's one little option down here that we're going to turn on for right now, and that's to have the GS Editor Advanced Toolbar. And I'm going to go ahead and just take out that pound sign at the beginning and save this PHP file. Now we are going to come in there and, and change one thing at a later time, but now if I refresh, you'll see I now get a little bit more, including the ability to use headings. That way I can go ahead and apply headings to the text, which I think is great. Now I'm going to go back to all pages and go to the home page, and here I'd like to add a little bit more. First off, I'm going to give myself a heading to there, and then I'm also going to um, add that image. So I'll go to images, browse the server, find that file, and, in, and put it right in there. Just like that. Really easy for us to use that image. Now we can also link to other pages. Link to page 2. Just creating a very simple link to page 2. I'll select that text, go over to link, and here I can link to a local page or to a URL or to an email or to text, anchors in the text, all sorts of things. I'm going to link to a local page, click on page 2, and hit OK. Now I can save that update, and if I were to view this page, let me go back to the home page, you'll see that we've got our image in there and we've got our link to page 2 and it works just fine. So this is a great content management system, gives you just the features that you need. If you need to be able to edit the HTML, you can definitely do that by clicking on the source and working with it there. But for most clients, um, that's really all they need to do is insert images and insert links and, and do some basic text formatting. Um, I typically tell my, my clients not to use the styles or the font or the size pickers, but instead to use the um, paragraph styles and heading styles that I've suggested them use. Sometimes um, I might make things like italic or bold italic or even underlined occasionally um, look a certain way. We typically don't use underline in a website and that's why I actually use it um, as a formatting option um, for maybe like a small subheader of a paragraph. Um, it's just kind of a weird one to use because it indicates a link but if it's not a link, it can really confuse people. So it's best to not use at all, unless you're reformatting it, making it look different with CSS. But that, once again, is for a later tutorial. Anyway, um, I can save this page, and now we're ready to go to our backups and just see that we've got some pages there, and each time we saved, it saved a backup of what it was before, which is great. We can also create a website backup as well. If I do new website archive then it created an archive which included the image or all the images or all the files that I have uploaded as well as all the pages in one backup zip which is really really great so one of the features that I love about get simple now in the next series of tutorials we're going to actually look at theming for um, get simple and so here's where things get a little bit more interesting so let's go on.